Hey, I want to talk to you about cauliflower from a little bit of a different angle here. All right, people talk about cauliflower because it's, well, yeah, it's low carb. It works on a ketogenic diet, but what about all the different enzymatic reactions that are occurring when you consume cauliflower? It's actually a pretty darn powerful superfood when it comes down to what it does. Let's talk about the simple things first. Yes, it's high in vitamin C, all right? We want things that are high in vitamin C without the sugar content attached to it, all right? When you have vitamin C, when it gets absorbed or tries to get absorbed, it's competing with the same receptor that grabs glucose. So if you have sugar coming in the equation, you're not getting the vitamin C. But that's not all that exciting. One of the pieces that I like most about cauliflower is the fact that it's super high in choline. Now, everyone always talks about eggs being high in choline, but cauliflower is just as high in choline as an egg. So a half a head of cauliflower has a tremendous amount of choline. Anyway, that's kind of boring, but what is choline doing? If you've ever noticed when you're doing a ketogenic diet or a low carb diet, sometimes when you're working out, it feels like your head is almost, I don't know, not connected with your body. It's like you're not able to feel that mind-muscle connection. Well, a lot of times that's because choline is a precursor to acetylcholine, and acetylcholine is a very imperative neurotransmitter in terms of the combination, or the communication, I should say, of the brain and the rest of the body. So anyhow, that's still kind of boring. Let's talk about some other interesting stuff. We're gonna get progressively more interesting as we go down the list here, because cauliflower is some wacky stuff. Hey, by the way, please do hit the red subscribe button if you haven't already, because you don't wanna miss our daily videos. So when you consume cauliflower, it converts into something known as anthocyanin, okay? So anthocyanin is a powerful antioxidant that has some really cool effects specifically on LDL cholesterol oxidation. So here's the problem. You're doing keto and your LDL cholesterol goes up. That's not the big part of the issue, okay? It's okay that your LDL goes up as long as it's circulating and doing its job right. When LDL sits around in the bloodstream for a long period of time, that's where a problem develops because the longer that it's sitting in the bloodstream, the longer that it's potentially exposed to oxidative stress. Oxidated LDL is the problem, not regular LDL. So anthocyanins stop the oxidation or slow down the oxidation of the LDL, making higher levels of LDL less potentially risky. So very good for someone that's doing a ketogenic diet. The other piece that people don't focus on a lot is sulforaphane. Sulforaphane you're gonna get in broccoli, you're gonna get in cauliflower, and yes, it is ultimately generated from sulfur. It's a derivative, right? So sulforaphane affects the liver in a very positive way as far as your phase two detoxification process goes with glutathione peroxidase and all that whole thing. What that means is when you are producing ketones, you are asking a lot of your liver. Your liver is taking substrates like fatty acids and turning them into ketones. That means your liver is working overtime. So if you're not taking care of the liver, then you run into an issue, right? The liver is designed to be kind of like almost purged every now and then. It needs to be basically what happens. Normally you're eating carbs, it fills up with glycogen, and then the liver has to purge, and that's part of the natural cycle. If that's not happening with keto, you can run into a problem. So you always wanna take care of the liver. So anyhow, one of the best, richest sources of sulforaphane. This next one that I'm talking about specifically is linked with cancer, okay? It's called iso thiocyanates. Okay, isothiocyanates have been linked in a lot of different studies to being anti-cancer. Now there was one specific review paper that was published in the Pacific Journal of Cancer Prevention, okay, back in 2013, took a look at six large studies and it found there was an inverse relationship between cruciferous vegetable intake and less cancer risk. So more cruciferous vegetables equaled less potential cancer. That's a pretty bold statement, but it's backed up. There's a lot of research to back it up. By the way, I will mention if you're doing keto and you're trying to do a clean version of keto, I've talked about this in my videos before, but I do recommend that you check out Thrive Market down below in the description. They're an online membership-based grocery store. So if you're trying to just assemble groceries or you wanna get things that I would typically recommend, I highly recommend that you check them out. There's a link down below in the description. So basically you can assemble what you want for your keto diet and it gets delivered right to your doorstep, just like a grocery store, except without having to go to the grocery store. But the best part is, like I said, I've been able to compile things that I would recommend. So definitely check them out after you watch this video. Okay, now for the juicy stuff. When you cook cauliflower, something interesting happens. There's something in cauliflower known as synegrin, and when it's heated or when it's roasted, it turns into something called allyl isothiocyanin. So just like the isothiocyanin that I talked about earlier, except it has A-L-L-Y-L -L in front of it. Okay, so complicated word, but pretty simple process in the body. What it does is it binds to something called the TRPV receptor. The TRPV1 receptor communicates from your gut to your brain up the vagus nerve. But the cool thing about it is it generates an intense feeling of satiety. It's the same feeling of satiety you get when you have olive oil, because olive oil works along a different pathway. Olive oil turns into oleolethanolamine within the body, which triggers that same TRPV1 receptor. So a lot of times when you have olive oil, you feel like you get satiated, but it turns out cauliflower from sort of a biochemical reaction 
action does the same thing. So try roasting some cauliflower and adding a little bit of olive oil, go for a double whammy. It's pretty amazing. It doesn't take much and you feel satiated like that. It's kind of a quick neuro hack to get your brain to not want to eat more food. One last thing and then I'll let you go. One thing that we've learned over time is that cauliflower, broccoli, things like that will give you gas. But all you have to do is take something called alpha galactosidase, okay, simple enzyme that helps break down raffinose, which is the sugar that you usually don't break down that gives you kind of the sulfur smelling gas from broccoli and cauliflower. That's it. Cauliflower rocks. See you tomorrow.